Hi EXers, welcome to the EX Podcast episode number 63. This is your host, Stefan Vincent. I'm here today with you because we need to check things up in the world of HR, talent acquisition and company culture in order to create positive employee experiences in our organizations. Your workplace doesn't have to be a dreadful place where employees feel disengaged. This podcast brings a different lens to the HR, employee engagements, and company culture conversation. We approach these topics from a brand and customer experience perspective rather than a traditional HR perspective. Our guests are thought leaders and disruptors in the EX space in their own way come to this show to share best practices on the key elements that foster employee engagement and strengthen company culture, and also to spark the conversation on how to create these positive employee experiences. Not every company can do what Airbnb or Google do around their employee experience, and this is what this show is all about, sharing stories of companies of all sizes not only to show that EX doesn't require a large budget or a large team, but also that there isn't one recipe. Each company can find its own way through the EX journey. Today's guest is Carmen Collins. She is the Senior Social Media and Talent Brands Manager at Cisco Systems. Today with Carmen, we talk about what were some of the concerns and fears to get her team started and what she did to overcome them. What skill sets are critical to successfully manage a social media and talent brand's team? What's the process of creating and distributing relevant content for your employees as well as for your candidates? How Carmen plans and manages content throughout the year? Which guidelines her team has in place to monitor that employee-generated content is on brands and compliance. And finally, how she measures the impact and the ROI of social campaigns. This episode is brought to you by Spring International. Spring is a women-owned boutique firm that focuses on performance-based employee engagement and people analytics. From onboarding to exit, Spring uses proven techniques to help companies improve the employee experience and calculate the ROI of HR programs and initiatives. I hope you enjoy this conversation. And because it takes a good amount of time to produce this podcast, please make sure to review the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, or YouTube, as it would help promote the content. If you want me to speak at your next event, get some advice on your EX initiatives or send me feedback and suggestions for future topics or guests, you can reach me at svincent at exsummit.com or on Twitter at ex underscore summit. All right, let's get to it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the EX podcast. Super excited for today's guest, Carmen Collins. Carmen is calling from Sarasota in Florida, and she is the the Senior Social Media and Talent Brands Manager for Cisco. Carmen, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Stefan. I'm so excited to be here. For those who are not necessarily familiar with Cisco, what do you guys do? And then after that, we can talk about what your background is and what brought you to Cisco. Sure. Well, we're talking about Cisco, the IT company, so C-I-S-C-O, not Cisco, the food company, not Cisco, the wrapper, although that would be a, <laughs> that would be a fun integration, don't you think? Um, it would. So Cis- Cisco is one of the leading um, IT companies in the world. I work for Cisco's talent brand team. We don't sit in Cisco's marketing organization. We sit in HR. And our focus for Cisco is to attract talent to come help us on our world-changing missions. How big is Cisco? Worldwide, Cisco has over 70,000 employees. But I see that as 
the opportunity to have 70,000 ambassadors um, because we rely very heavily on our employee advocates to help us tell our culture and talent story out in the marketplace. So some people see 70,000 employees. I see 70,000 advocates. How many countries are you present, present in? Over 30. I, oh, I don't wow. know the exact number because we keep changing. We've right. um, been on a mission recently to acquire some of the best companies as well to help us uh, achieve our goals. Um, so that number is always growing. But we are a global country from Australia to Russia to Japan and China, Bangalore, um, all of the European countries, South Africa, of course, Canada, Mexico City. I mean, I could go on, but... We're global. We're everywhere. Good. You talked about the fact that you are on the talent brand manager team, management team, and uh, you sit in HR note with marketing. Let's talk a bit about your background and what brought you to Cisco a few years ago. Yes, I started off life as a journalist. And then I realized that journalists have a really hard job <laughs> <laughs> and they don't get paid a lot of money and they work nights and weekends. Um, so I went into copywriting. I've, I've always been a writer. It's, it's what I love to do. And when the internet became a marketing tool, um, the company I was working for at the time, as with most companies, um, they always give social media or internet marketing to the youngest person on the team because they're like, oh, you're, you know, you have an account, you do this. Um, when marketing became a thing on the internet, I was given that as part of my job and then um, found out that it was a perfect match for my skills and, and what I was good at and um, have worked for several Fortune 500 brands doing social media for a really long time. And I'm not going to tell you how many years because um, <laughs> that would ask. tell you. I, I'm just, just, just know that I'm a really cool Gen Xer. Um, <laughs> and um, came to Cisco, my four year, what we call Cisco Versary. Um, we even have a hashtag, Cisco Versary. So my four year Cisco Versary is this November. Uh, and um, I came here because I saw an opportunity to use my skill set to talk to a completely different audience. I've talked to B2B audiences, B2C audiences, nonprofit audiences. But this was the first time that um, I had the opportunity to talk to employees and talent. And I don't think employer brand or talent brand is a new area of marketing, but it's certainly for most companies a new focus. So that's why I came to Cisco and four years later, still here and still doing some pretty cool stuff with our talent branding. All right. And we'll get into some of the cool stuff in the, in the <laughs> okay. next few minutes. <laughs> When you joined Cisco, as you said, about four years ago uh, in November, uh, it, was a, it was a newly created team, right? Correct. It was a brand new team to Cisco. Again, a brand new focus. Um, a lot of companies, again, have done this in some ways in the past, but it became more important, especially for a company like Cisco, which is headquartered in Silicon Valley. I mean, that's the place where the highest competition for talent is. Yeah that it became very important for us to focus on attracting talent to Cisco. So the, the first question would be for our listeners who may be considering to start uh, an employer brands or talent brands team, can you share with us what were some other concerns or fears to get it started at Cisco and, how you, and what you did to overcome those concerns? Yes, I will say that Cisco particularly had what I called the perfect storm of opportunity when we started our team. We had executive buy-in from the start Which all is the good. way up. We, yes, a, a lot of brands will probably have to get that executive buy-in. Yeah. I already, I was very lucky in that we already had it. Um, our chief people officer, and you can tell by how cool her title is, how cool she is. Her name is Fran Katsudis and, um, she leads our HR organization on the executive leadership team at Cisco. Um, she bought in. She, she knew it was important. And her, um, her leadership team, our VP of HR, knew it was important. I mean, VP of talent acquisition, excuse me, knew that it was important. And so as a team, we had that executive buy-in. Um, but for those starting an employer brand, that's probably going to be a consideration. And there are plenty of statistics out there if you go online and look up 
you know, the benefits of having an employer brand and why employee advocacy is so important um, to be able to build that case. The other thing is that we knew that social media was important. And when my team started, it's a funny story. I like to tell it this way. Um, All we did in social media, we just had a Twitter account and all we did was post and we would hashtag every word in the tweet. Um, hashtag apply, hashtag now, hashtag engineers, hashtag C++. Like, you know, you would read it and the only word that didn't have a hashtag was the word in. And you're like, <laughs> why, didn't we ha- why didn't we hashtag in? We hashtagged everything else. And the sole purpose was to tell people that you could work for Cisco. Yeah. The challenge that we faced is in a highly competitive market for engineering and technology talent, why would you want to, right? And that was the story that was missing. We were telling you that you could work here, but we wouldn't tell you why you would choose us over any of our competitors or any other technology companies. So that was our biggest challenge. And we came together as a team for the first time um, after forming, and we decided we needed a mission statement, as any good team should have. And our mission, I mean, you know, I could read it. It was, it was beautifully written at the time, but boiled down to a simple term, a simple phrase, it was to make personal connections with talent, which got me very excited as a social media person because personal connections is what social media is all about. And that really set us off on our uh, journey to becoming what I hope many people see as one of the best examples of talent brand in the market. Um, and using our employees as our voice. Any other obstacles that you may think of um, as you started the, as you built the team over the years? Um, I can see, again, we had a perfect storm of having the right situations. I can see other oh. people's challenges, um, being told you can't do something. Um, in many organizations, there is a little bit of tug of war between marketing and talent branding. Should talent brand sit in marketing? Should it be separate? Should it be, uh, you know, blended in some way? There's all kinds of organizational questions. And I don't know that there's a right answer for that. I feel like for Cisco, we've found the right balance in that we work very closely with our marketing and branding teams. But again, sitting in HR, I feel like we have just a little more freedom and uh, a little more, I don't know, ability to take risk because we're not as constrained. And, and I think that's, that's what works for us. Um, I wish I had the secret sauce because I could probably write a book and, and retire. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that's a consideration for anyone looking at employment branding is where, where does it make sense for your organization? Because it really is a niche audience and a niche skill set. Yes, it's social media. Yes, it's marketing, but it's also a specific audience that you're trying to reach and you have to put yourself in your audience's shoes. Where are they? How do they want to talk to you? So how can you make those connections with them? It's a very good point to make that each organization is different and has a different structure. And that there's no necessary, as you said, one recipe that's, you know, talent branding or social media, employee branding should sit within HR or marketing or whatever else. Um, it, it varies from one organization to another. And some are very successful with EB being under marketing and not necessarily under HR. Exactly. So let's talk about what your team looks like now, four years, um, four years after, and what skill sets you think are critical to successfully manage a social media and talents brands team? Sure. Again, every organization is different and they're Mm -hmm. going to find different solutions. But the solutions we found was that we divided our team into what we call three pillars of talent brand. The first being social media, which um, when I was hired, I was hired to lead that pillar. And now I have a team that helps manage that pillar. The second pillar is recruitment marketing. And that is essentially everything else externally um, that we use to communicate to candidates that doesn't fall under social media. So things like um, interactive PDFs and um, brochures that we might take to a recruiting event, how we show up at recruiting events with, you know, um, 
signage and email communications. And then our third pillar is events because specifically around hiring the best tech talent, we are very focused on making sure that's diverse tech talent because we, as a company, firmly believe that a diversity of thought is what's going to move us faster and, and forward. And so our event strategy is very important too. So those are our three pillars as Cisco's talent brand team. Um, over the four years since I've been here, again, I have taken on leading a team of global talent brand specialists. So I have one person, or actually I have now two pers- people in the U.S. who focus, one focuses specifically on social media and another focuses on all three pillars. And then I have a talent brand lead in uh, Europe, in the Emir, and I have one in APJ, and I have one in Greater China. Um, we all work together as a global team. Um, Cisco owns the WebEx platform, and uh, you know it is Cisco's goal to make sure that everybody can do their work from anywhere. That we don't, you know, we make work possible no matter where you are. So we eat our own dog food and use our own products. And so, as a global team, we're it's just like we sit in the same location. We, we are on WebEx with each other all day, collaborating, making sure that um, Cisco's overarching brand is well represented when we're talking to candidates because Cisco's brand is, is the Cisco brand. Talent brand is not an exception to that. Wow. We are a complement to that. And then we make sure that, you know, the candidate experience is consistent across all of our communications. And, um, since, since starting, we've also, we also have a, a lead for our events, uh, pillar. Um, so we've grown from a team of, two or three at the time to now a team of six or seven. Um, so still a small but mighty team. Um, but we have, you know, finally found our, our groove and, and found out how, how we can staff as a team. And then I think you asked me what skills specifically um, for talent branding. Right. I, I can speak best to that subject from a social media perspective, because that's my background and that's the team I lead. But what I'm really proud of for my team is that we are storytellers. And that is the skill that I would value amongst anything else if hiring for talent brand. Because, again, I mentioned earlier that we have essentially 70,000 employee advocates. And they're always surprised, which touches me, touches my heart in a way that it just moves me that they would think they don't have a story. And when we reach out to them, we see a tweet they post or something they post on Instagram using our We Are Cisco hashtag. And we reach out to them and like, we, we really think there's more to that story there. We'd like to tell it. They're shocked and amazed and excited and sometimes hesitant. And they're like, well, I'm not a writer. And, you know, we say, yes, but we are, we're storytellers. We're not going to write it for them. It's their voice, but we're going to help them craft their story. Um, that's the biggest skill I can say that, uh, our team possesses that helps us, um, in our talent brand endeavors. So before we get to the creation and the distribution aspect of content, let me ask you one question. Sure. So obviously you manage the, the Cisco talents brands, right? And you're able to sit within HR and have that oversight of what's going on, 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 the, um, on the brand side of recruitment. Mm-hmm. How does it work when when you work with uh, the recruiting team per se, because obviously the, the consistency of the experience from the candidates interacting with the brands to the candidates interviewing with Cisco, everything has to be consistent because I'm sure that you guys promise, you know, what, um, make some promises about what the Cisco experience is for employees. But mm-hmm. once they start interviewing with uh, the recruiting team, they may have a different experience if there's no consistency across the entire organization. So how do you guys get aligned with all the different steps throughout the candidate's journey? Sure. Um, well, 
first, let me help the listeners understand that for Cisco, again, every company is different, but for Cisco, um, we have our at Cisco social media channels, which is the the brand and the company representing in social. And then the channels that the talent brand team manages are the We Are Cisco channels in social media. So we have separated our audience and our our voice a little bit in that way. Interesting. And um, what you're exactly right. We we essentially promise something in social media, which is in the way we do it is very interesting, and in that. This is why we use employee advocacy and employee-generated content. Some people call this UGC, user-generated content. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like we we invented the term employee-generated content or EGC because a brand can say all day long that Cisco is a great place to work. But when the employees are the ones saying it first in their social media channels to their networks because that's where talent lives, and then seen by us and amplified by us, we are not promising something that doesn't exist. We right. are we are saying what they say. Um, we've even been criticized some about using words like Cisconians and Ciscoversary, which I mentioned earlier, which my response is that I didn't make up those words you guys did. <laughs> you know, these are, these are the words you use when you're talking about the culture, what it's like to work here. So we're just, we're reflecting back the way you say things. Um, and so over the last several years of, of talent branding, we spent the first year or so really convincing our talent acquisition team, which we report into in HR and really helps us have that alignment with our recruiters is explaining to recruiters, and this is several years ago, so most recruiters would know this by now, but how important social media is Mm. to the success of their recruiting effort, and then how important employee voice is to the success of their recruiting effort. You know, if you're you're recruiting for a specific team, one of the first things someone's going to ask you is probably, what's the team like? What's the manager like? What would my teammates, my coworkers be like? And we are empowering them with that information off the top, you know, everything we post in our, we are Cisco social media channel are from employees. It's what it's really like to live that life. Um, so our, our recruiters, they're on board, they get it in a 70,000 person company. We are never going to have a consistent message, nor am I convinced that should we, because the message that you want to convey in Bangalore is probably a completely different yes. experience and message than you would want to convey in Japan or Mexico City. Um, but what we do is provide a structure, some guidelines, and then allow for localization and really empowering the recruiters to tell why they love where they work. Because if that person, if that recruiter is the first person that a candidate connects with in the process, like a real live, you know, talk on the phone kind of person, then we want that recruiter to feel empowered to say why they love working at Cisco, because what matters to them is going to matter to a candidate. Um, So we've, we, we've made social a part of the recruiter's jobs and also empowered them to sort of tell their own story in a way that allows them to make those personal connections we talked about in our mission. What's the process of creating and distributing relevant content for your employees as well as for your candidates? <laughs> you know, do you, did you develop multiple personas depending on, on the roles that you're trying to fill on a regular basis? or maybe personalized by regions that you cover, and w- which social channels um, do you use as well? So you mentioned Twitter, obviously, before. but mm-hmm. So let's talk maybe about you know, how do you create the content and then how do, you, how do you distribute the contents to, I would say, the right audience at the right time? Okay. Well, when we started, we had a bigger problem than the right audience at the right time. We had no... If you talk to people about what it was like at Cisco, people who were in high-tech fields probably wouldn't have thought twice about us at all. So we had an image problem just from talent 
in general. Okay. The first thing we had to do was build awareness that Cisco is a pretty darn cool place to work. Our employees knew it, and they were talking about it in their social media channels already using hashtag we are Cisco. When my team got started, we realized pretty quickly that if we would just listen on the we are Cisco hashtag, we would see what our employees were saying. And we, again, as since I mentioned that storytelling is such a strong component of what our team does, we went from having to go ask employees for content to having an abundance of it. And I've never worked in any other social media team where you have a problem of too much content. <laughs> Gen- generally, it's not enough. But right, we, yeah. have, we have awesome employees who have awesome stories to tell. And so that's how we source our content. We watch the We Are Cisco hashtag. You ask what channels. Um, we watch hashtags and Instagram and Twitter specifically because those are the channels that use hashtags in that way. LinkedIn has just started using um, searchable hashtags. Yes. So we had, a, we had a little party on that day. Um, so we can now listen to that conversation on LinkedIn. Um, manually, it, the API doesn't allow us to do it use a tool, but we will, you know, search for the hashtag on LinkedIn. Um, Facebook doesn't allow hashtag. I mean, you can use a hashtag, but it doesn't allow you to listen on them as, as much. So we try to um, work our way into as many employee groups on Facebook that we can and, and sort of see what they're posting. And that's how we source our content. Every single photo you see on our Instagram channel, every Instagram story, every Facebook live, every, um, tweet is an amplification of an employee. Um, we even had a Snapchat channel uh, two years ago. We decided that we were going to need Snapchat to reach a specific demographic. So after yeah. we've built, after we've built awareness, then yes, we go into what you asked about, about looking at profiles for different candidates, different age groups, where are they in social? And we're very, we don't always jump into the latest thing in social. We, we want to make sure that we're spending our resources reaching the candidates that we need to reach. Uh, but we even had a Snapchat channel for early career and interns, which is award-winning. Actually, um, all of our channels at Cisco uh, for our We Are Cisco efforts are award-winning. We're very proud of our team and our efforts. And I say it's because we have 70,000 award-winning employees. <laughs> It's really their award. It's it's their voice that we're amplifying. So that's how we do our, our content. That's where we get it. And a, even our careers page, which is cisco.com backslash careers, we just launched a new careers experience last year. Every photo on that website is either taken of an employee. So we did a photo shoot with actual employees or submitted by an employee who has, you know, has a passion for photography or just manages to take some really great photos of what life at Cisco is like there. No stock photography was harmed (laughs) in the making of our website. Like everything we, and we do this for a reason. There's a, a survey every year. It's called the Edelman trust barometer. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And it rates who people trust. And I don't think anyone would be surprised that in 2018, nobody trusts anybody. Um, but of the people they do trust, it's the people like them. It's the people in their networks. I agree. And employee voices are trusted 16 points more, according to the 2017 survey, than the CEO. Now, that's not to say that people think CEO Chuck Robbins is not telling the truth because, one, he's awesome. I finally got my selfie with Chuck Robbins this year. (laughs) Um, And he's not misrepresenting anything. He is just expected to of course say that Cisco has great products and a great culture and it's a great place to work. But employees, that's not part of their job description. So when they say it, it has a level of trust embedded within it that really attracts those candidates. So you're in a good position because you have a plethora of content that is generated by the employees. You don't really have to think through how much content your team has to create. Obviously, not everybody is in that position but how do you plan and how do you manage content throughout the year? Do you guys create a, a, an editorial calendar ahead of time for the entire year? 
Is it more on the fly and more uh, reactive to what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe a mix of both? Yes, I think in social media, it's a mix of both. We um, have a social media editorial counter for every channel that we manage. And for example, on Twitter, we want to make sure that there are specific topics that we cover all the time. Um, Cisco is a powerhouse when it comes to corporate social responsibility and our efforts there. So we make sure that at least one day is dedicated to that. We want to make sure that our employees, because giving back is part of our deal. Make sure that we talk about that once a week. We want to make sure we talk about our engineering talent and our sales talent. So we have sort of a calendar from that perspective. But then we also have a calendar of what we call our fun days. Fun fact about Cisco employees, we like food and coffee. So if it's National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day, you can bet we're going to have a photo of an employee eating a cookie. Or if it's, you know, coffee day, we have a Cisco mug with, Uh, you know, an animated GIF with the, the steam coming off it. So we have our fun day calendar, which we coordinate with our editorial calendar. But things happen. Things happen in the world in which we have to pause everything. You know, like our conversation about what it's like to work at Cisco does not belong in a place where there has been something that's happened in the news that is like a school shooting or something like that. We have no place in that conversation. So we have to be ready to react and, and have our crisis comms planned down. So we will stop talking entirely. Um, or something will happen. For example, um, the Super Bowl in the U S last year, Justin Timberlake was the halftime performer And I'm just a big fan of Justin Timberlake anyway. So I was watching at halftime and I realized we had no plans to talk about the Super Bowl because, again, we're a global company. We had no plans to really participate in that conversation until I remembered watching the halftime show that our employees, who I don't know if I've mentioned how awesome they are enough, but <laughs> they are awesome, um, had created a video where they were dancing to Justin Timberlake's Can't Stop the Feeling song. Oh. So all of, all of a sudden in my head, I'm like, why are we not posting this video in conjunction with the halftime show at the Super Bowl? So it was a on the fly, you know, I'm 9.30 at night on a Sunday night sitting here tweeting because social media is a 24-7 gig. And it was probably one of our best performing tweets ever. So again, you have to be ready to respond. You have to be ready um, to, you know, take things back a notch if something happens in the news. But yeah, and seize, you, seize the moment. Yes, exactly. And then, but, but we have to, with so much content and so many demands on our team's space, um, you know, everybody wants an Instagram post, everybody wants a tweet. Um, so we have to be strategic which our editorial calendar allows us to be. Right. As you're a global company, is all the content in English or do you guys or do your employees also share content in their own language? Mostly our content is in English because generally around the globe, that is kind of the default language for right. Cisco. But right. I will say that we have many cases. Uh, we wrote a blog post about 13 women in Japan who wrote a book about women in leadership. And the blog was written in both English and Japanese uh, to our global audience. Mexico City loves Instagram. I have never seen one location <laughs> so excited about a social channel. They, Everybody in, in Mexico City that works for Cisco loves Instagram. And so we will often write um, Instagram posts in both English and Spanish. Um, it, it depends on the channel. It depends on the audience we're talking to. And uh, we, you know, we match um, whatever legal requirements exist. So our courier website is translated into French, for example, because that's mandatory in France. So we try to be as global um, as we can be and realize again that in some cases locales need to be able to have some flexibility right. to take our guidelines and make them theirs. So let's talk a bit more about guidelines then. One, I would say, if not one, even if it's probably even the biggest concern or fear for any organization that would like to use employee-generated content is 
how much control can we have on the content that is going to be created and distributed by own employees? What, what if someone does something or says something on social media that may hurt our company? Right. right. So what are some of the guidelines in place uh, that you have put in place or maybe that existed even before to monitor that employee generated content just to make sure that it's on brands and that it's yes. compliant from an HR perspective? The biggest thing that we tell employees is, and, and I think Cisco mandates it every year that employees have to sign the Cisco social media guidelines. Now, as with any set of guidelines that, you know, you're required to sign, um, it, it probably reads a little bit like an iTunes agreement and some people just sign it to do it. But right. our team specifically tries to coach employees with what we call the, would you show it to your mama rule? Mm -hmm. And if you're comfortable with your mom seeing it or your boss <laughs> seeing it, we, tr we trust you. And there's a big word there, trust. Yes. There are industries highly regulated industries, this is not for you, right? Like if your legal department has to approve everything, you're probably not going to have the ability to allow your employees to share on social media as freely as we do. But I think that's one of the things that really helps our team stand out is we have had a four year journey in trust and we, my boss likes to say that we planned for the 99% of time it would go right and also had a plan for the 1% of the time that it might go wrong. And I can honestly say that it, while we have had some moments that made us question <laughs> our existence at times, <laughs> we, have, we have never had to take any kind of disciplinary action towards employees sharing on behalf of our culture, um, especially as advocates for our channels, because what... What we've found is kind of icing on the cake is that they want to do this well. When they realize that they are the voice of Cisco, they want to know the metrics. How did my Instagram story do? What can I do better next time? How did my Facebook Live perform? You know, can I try something else? Can you give me feedback? Um, I wish I just had more time in the day for feedback from police because they're so excited and they want generally want to do well. And they have brilliant questions. You know, they're like, we're, we're doing an Instagram live and there's beer on the table. Is that okay? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Is it 5 a.m. or 5 p.m.? Because that's an entirely different, would you show it to your mama? I'm like, you know, that's, we're adults here. It's life that Cisco, we want to be as authentic as we can be. Um, but as long as they sign the social media policy, which includes telling them that, you know, you, you can't share sensitive information about our clients or our partners or our financials. Um, we actually encourage them to be them. And we, we give video on demand trainings just to scale to a, an organization the size where we specifically say, we do not want you to be the Cisco version of you. We don't want you to create the Cisco. Like I don't have a Cisco Carmen account. I just have a Carmen account. Um, we don't want you to create Cisco versions of yourself because that we're not corporate robots. We're all people and people want to connect to people and we don't want you to share about Cisco all the time, right? Like that becomes noise. And we, we want you to share when it matters to you, because if it matters to you, it's going to matter to the talent that we're trying to attract. And again, the perfect storm of, of having this structure in place and having an employee base that's this passionate about working here. And people often think I make this up. They really do think that we brand our way to a talent brand. We PR our way there. And I'm like, nope, what you see is what you get. And if I didn't have that, um, that authentic view from employees, we would have to have a different strategy. Right. Um, but it really is what it's like to work here. It's amazing. So obviously on the marketing side, a big thing is to be able to measure the success of any campaigns from on the talent brand side, how do you measure the impact and the ROI of your social campaigns? We are very adamant and I am very adamant leading the social media team that we drive business impact for a while. 
we didn't report that way. And I got really tired of people saying that social media doesn't drive talent acquisition. And I'm like, nope, I'm calling, I'm calling BS on that. <laughs> and um, so we started by setting our goals based on the sales funnel. Mm-hmm. So just like anybody else who is selling a product or, I mean, I feel like we're selling a lifestyle Yes. and um, we work on the funnel from awareness to um, consideration to decision to advocacy. We work on the funnel. Every goal that we set for every social media channel hits one of those pieces of the funnel. Is this an awareness goal? Is this to get people to engage with us and connect with us? Is this to get people to click on a link? And every single one of our tactics drives to that sales funnel and is presented back to the business as here's how this impacts you. For example, at, at the awareness level, when we make it on the great place to work list, when we um, win top employer for corporate social responsibility, when we, we just got on People Magazine's list of 50 companies that care, this is a direct result of the market talking about our talent brand, right? Yes. And so that is a business impact because now when you're trying to attract talent, you can put those logos on your email communications and it gives you some validity. Our Glassdoor reviews is another example that we've moved that needle from, I think when we started a couple of years ago, we were at a 3.6 rating and we just passed 4.0 stars. And as a company with over 12,000 reviews, it takes over 2,000 reviews to move a tenth of a point. So yeah. that's how much our talent brand has impacted awareness. Yeah, I was about to say this. I mean, that's impressive from 3.6 to 4 in what, four years? Yes. Yeah, it is, especially with a company the size of Cisco. That's very, right. very impressive. Right, I mean, if you have 2,000 reviews, it's much easier to move right. the needle than if you have, 12, I think, 000. over 12,000 yeah. over what we have now. So, so that, you know, we go back to the business and say, this is what, when we're doing awareness, just awareness in social media, this is what we're driving for you. And then as we go down the funnel, when we have people engaging with us, nobody moves in and out of the funnel in a straight line. Um, I had a colleague, I was on another podcast and he says, I'm not going to apply for a job just from a tweet. I don't care how good you are, Carmen. (laughs) And I said, no, I, you know, I don't think anybody expects that, but they see a tweet, then they'll go to the career site, then they'll go to LinkedIn and then they'll talk to a friend and then they'll come back and apply. Like there's, there's not a direct, always a direct correlation of, you know, we started awareness, we go to consideration, then we click a link. And we no, because there's some vetting process uh, from, from the candidates as well, just to make sure that uh, it's, it's a mutual fit on both sides. Exactly. Right. And they should. And that's my biggest career advice to everybody that's listening. Make sure your company fits you as much as you fit the yeah. company. That is very, very important. Um, but, you know, we, we have a business in, you know, for every click that or for every apply that social media can drive we've just saved cisco's bottom line we've made it easier to hire we've made the time to hire less and with the advocacy program we have the other business impact we have to cisco is the cost of retaining talent is zero but essentially i mean it's not that's cut and dried but having talent that stays and wants to work with you and keep that institutional knowledge at the organization is another business impact that we drive. So when we're talking in social media and recruitment marketing, whatever we're looking at, the first thing we start with, with teams is what's your goals. These are the tactics we think can meet your goals. And we always come back with metrics against those goals because it's, it's important to know that we're not just out there. I mean, people think people that work in social media, all we do is tweet, (laughs) Um, and, you know, if all I did was tweet all day, I would, I would get to, you know, not work 15 hour days and I get to sleep on occasion, but that's, uh, that's not how, you know, we're strategy driven. We're strategy driven. That's, uh, that's very good. Uh, What, what would be the the success that you, you're the most proud of in your four years at Cisco? Um, just our employees. I'm, I'm the most proud of them. And I get you can hear it in my voice. I get emotional about it yeah, because I can, I can hear that. Yeah. yeah, they um, they never cease to amaze me. We have had so many programs, and like I said, we've won awards, and we have an award shelf that we're also very proud of. But every single one of those awards is because of our employees and the stories that they share with us, and the impact they have. Um. 
I'm the most proud of them because whenever we asked for their help, when we launched, launched Snapchat, we had 25 employees on a WebEx and we're like, we're not really sure that this is going to work, but it's a pilot. And would you trust us? And would you work with us? And not one person said no. And, you know, 75 Snapchat ambassadors later, um, we had, they help each other out. Somebody's sick. Oh, I got your day. No worries. Um, our blog community, we have a, a, a blog called Life at Cisco, which is specifically for uh, our employees to tell stories in order to attract talent. And out of necessity, we created a community for them so that they would know when their blog was launching. But what's great about that community is they cheer each other on and share their own stories with each other and comment on each other's blog posts and share it. I mean, like how we come together as an employee community is, is icing on the cake. I don't think we planned that four years ago when we started. I don't think that was even a seed in our, in our imagination. We were here to attract talent and that was it. Um, but in doing it the way we do it, we have employees who, who um, have started nonprofit organizations and, and raised money for causes that are near and dear to them. We have had um, employees talking about how um, Cisco enables them to bring their, um, we have bring your disabled child to work day, which lets them partake in the Cisco experience that they might not otherwise do. Um, we have, uh, an employee who ran the amazing race. <laughs> like we have an employee who got a deal on shark tank. Um, oh, wow. and, and they, and what makes me the most proud of them is they're humble about it because when we, again, when we reach out and ask them to tell their story, they are generally like, no, I mean, we had, we even had an employee who, when she started her internship several years ago at Cisco, she was homeless. She was living in her car and, she says thanks to Cisco for taking a chance on me as an African-American engineering woman that, you know, my family is now in a better place. I'm in a better place. And I mean, they move me. I, it's, I haven't, I have a pretty easy job. I mean, it's not an easy job, but you can tell that I, it's a lot of strategy goes into it, but they make it easy. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm most proud of, but I'm also the most proud of our team because Again, when we started this mission, we started it together, and I, we didn't really have someone to look up to in the space. I mean, at the time, the space was just getting started, so we didn't have a, a way to get where we were going. We kind of just, you know, put our boots on and strapped it up and said, here we go. We're, we're going together, and we're going to take risks, and um, they've not always been easy risks. I mean, giving – I mean, if you have an employee go live – video on behalf of your brand, like that's some serious trust, right? Yes. And, yeah. and as a team, that's what, that's what we've developed is a trust in each other and our employees to do this for us. So yeah, that's what I'm most proud of. And I'll tell you, since I've started this uh, EX journey on my hands, I've been following Cisco for the past year and a half, and it's, it's been amazing. So yeah, <laughs> great job there, I would say. <laughs> Thank you. It, full, full props to the team. I mean, we, we, are, we, we move as a team. We adapt as a team. Um, we are a team. That's good. Uh, b before we wrap it up, let me ask you some fun questions and then we'll go to, uh, to the end of, of the discussion today. If you were to invite a historical figure or someone famous to dinner, who do you pick and why? I have several answers to that question. Um, but So I'll pick a serious answer and then I'll give you my fun answer. Mm -hmm. I, went, I went to the University of Virginia, which was founded by Thomas Jefferson. So, of course, no good uh, respecting Wahoo, which is what we call ourselves at UVA. No respecting Wahoo would answer that question without saying I would love to have a conversation with Thomas Jefferson. Um, he, is a, he was a flawed individual, which makes him very interesting to me, but brilliant. Just, I mean, just crazy brilliant and humble, which you know, on his tombstone, he does not list president of the, of the United States as one of his achievements. Um, he lists other achievements, which is, to me is, is kind of cool. Um, but the fun answer to that question would be, uh, Joss Whedon, who is a director. He, he, he wrote Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the television show, which is the best show of all time, in my personal opinion. And, uh, he, 
produced the Avengers and, and, and a lot of Marvel comics. So I would just want to talk to him because also he's hilarious. His writing style is funny, very dark comedy. So I'd like to talk to him. Okay. So I've got to ask you this question. Sure. You are a social media guru. So what would be the most embarrassing moment you've ever had yourself on social media? Most embarrassing moment on social media? Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Well, first of all, I appreciate you calling me a guru. I always <laughs> think that those titles, gurus, ninjas, you know, social media masters are always, they're always hard for me to accept because it's always changing and I don't know that you can ever be an expert at it. But I think that's something that people bestow upon you, not something you claim on your own. So thank you for that. Um, I don't know that I've had an embarrassing moment in social media, but I've had a lot of interesting ones. Um, thanks to Cisco technology, uh, which powers Jimmy Kimmel's wall of America. I got to be a backup dancer for usher on Jimmy Kimmel live. No kidding. Um, That's awesome. I was, yep. I was on a screen behind usher, uh, dancing to his song, no limit. It was awesome. Um, and slightly embarrassing if you see me dance. So I guess it, it, it qualifies as embarrassing. Did you um, have your purple hair at that time? I did not have my purple hair at the time. So I didn't look as cool um, dancing. Uh, and and they, here's the funny thing. There were three screens and they, were, they had many different um, audience members participating and dancing behind Usher. And they put me next to this girl who was, I, she had to be like, on tour with Jennifer Lopez or something. She was an amazing dancer. And then here's me next to her. So that truly probably was one of my most embarrassing moments, but a lot of fun um, thanks to Cisco Tech. So okay. that, was, that was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm sure we can find that video on YouTube. Uh, you can. Yeah, it's still there somewhere. <laughs> All right. Um, what is your favorite vacation spot? Oh, that's hard. I'm a world traveler. I, I mean, it's, it, it's hard. I, I think my favorite spot that I've ever been is Sydney, Australia. I was there for New Year's Eve one year, and it was fabulous. But I was also in Prague, which was beautiful, oh, and yes. Coast, Costa Rica. And um, I honeymooned in, in Italy, and I speak French, so I've spent a lot of time in Paris. And any place that allows me to experience new cultures and meet new people, I'm I'm in. Like... I really do believe that we are a global citizen and, and take that very seriously. Okay. Well, I do know you spoke French, so maybe next time we can do the interview in French. Oh, um, <laughs> I have not spoken French in a while. So that would probably be my most embarrassing moment if we tried to do that. <laughs> okay. So maybe coming up next. <laughs> um, what, what, what's the way for our listeners to follow you and Cisco on social media then? Well, you can certainly follow my team, uh, the human beings behind We Are Cisco. We are We Are Cisco pretty much everywhere. If there's a social media channel that we use, it's We Are Cisco. I encourage you to also follow at Cisco. They do a great job of, uh, again, it's a different audience. They're talking about Cisco as a company, but they do a great job. So you can follow at Cisco. And me personally, my handle is um, hard and I got married later in life and I established my career with my maiden name. And I'm also the last person in my family with that name. So I kept it. My social media handle is at C Shirky Collins, which is hard. So I'll spell it C S H I R K E Y C O L L I N S. Um, you can find me there on Twitter and on Instagram. And, uh, I, I, you could probably, I, I've closed my Facebook down. My Facebook is like Fort Knox now because um, <laughs> I, I, I stay there to post things for my in-laws to see. Um, it's not my network anymore. I'm, I'm partial Instagram, but okay. uh, well, Instagram I, and Twitter, you can find me. Okay. And we'll share those on the podcast notes anyway. Thank you. Any last word of advice or wisdom? Take risks. Like, you know, I know that the idea of giving employees a username and password to a social media account when they have no marketing experience is scary. It was for us, and it still occasionally is, um, you know, especially when you look at live video, anything can happen live, and it usually does. But 
we have gotten more mileage out of trust and taking those calculated risks than I think we ever anticipated when we did it. So, you know, there's an old adage that, you know, you have to fail, you have to fall down to get up. Um, you've got to be willing, you've got to be willing to take that leap. And, uh, that's how you, that's how you innovate and change things. Um, so that's my best piece of advice for people. Oh, well, thank you so much, Carmen. It's been, uh, it's been an awesome discussion, I will tell well, you. I'm glad. Thanks and, for having me. And uh, thanks for all those uh, very valuable insights as well. Sure thing. Thanks for tuning in to the EX Podcast. If you want to learn more, visit our website at expodcast.com. If you want to find out more about our next conferences, go to exsummit.com. Finally, you can also find my manifesto on business to employee or B2E branding at b2ebranding.co. See you next week.